Hey, funny thing that happened to the fire department. Okay, the city of Concord, when they condemned a house, when, when they condemned a house, generally they would give it to the fire department for training. And then when we're done with it, we would burn the house to the ground. We had one time, one day they were done with all the training in it and whatnot, and they were getting ready to burn the house to the ground. One thing they did, they set the house on fire, and they wanted me to go up a ladder with an ax and break the, and pry the window open and like get into the building. Okay, I pried and pried and pried with that ax, with the blade underneath the sill of the window. Mm -hmm. Kinda, couldn't get it to go up. So the next thing you do, you turn your face away and smash the glass. I swung the ax and broke the glass and the sash went up by itself. And it got, they got that, they had it on 16 millimeter film. Huh. And I got back, came back down the ladder and the training officer looked at me and he said, how did you manage to do that? And I said, I don't know. They, and it showed me, prying on that window, trying to get it to go open. I smashed the glass out and the sash went up by itself. New Hampshire, right? Yeah, Laconia, New Hampshire. Okay, tell us about that. I, well, I can't tell you much about when I was born, except that I was there. <laughs> no, I mean, tell us about where you, were, where you lived and all that. Okay, I was born in Laconia, New Hampshire. I grew up in a small native community of Wanalancet, New Hampshire. And when I turned, just before I turned 16, we moved to Milford, New Hampshire. We finally lived in a house that had running water and electricity. When you were how old? Fifteen and a half. Wow. And I graduated from high school in Milford when I was 17 because I never saw the seventh grade. You skipped seventh grade? Well, the thing was that a little one-room schoolhouse that I went to in Wanalancet because of grades one through six in one room, one-room schoolhouse. Okay, like when you were in the second grade doing second grade work, you heard what was going on for the kids in the fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. So you picked up on this. When the three of us to go into junior high school, went from Warner Lancet, they had to bus us to Ossipee, New Hampshire. When we got there the first day of school, they gave us an SAT. Two of us about aced it. We never saw the seventh grade. They put us right into the eighth grade. Wow. And so I graduated from high school when I was 17. Okay, we graduated on a Friday evening. The following Monday morning at 7 a.m., I had to be in Concord, New Hampshire to start classes at the State Fire Academy. Did that. I graduated on November 21st of 63. I could not become a... The city would not put me in as a regular firefighter until I was 18. <laughs> okay, so November 22nd, which was the day of 63, which was the day JFK was assassinated... I just kind of hung out at the fire station, didn't have anything else to do, yeah. nothing like that. And then the next morning on the 23rd was my 18th birthday, was my first full day on duty at the fire department. Wow. The day after JFK was killed. Huh? The day after JFK was killed. Yeah. Because I had to be 18. So I started there on my 18th birthday. I was there for 16 years, or just over 16 years, <clears throat> until three of us were injured in a house fire where just about three quarters of the house came down on top of us. I got my spine smashed and the other guys had broken bones and whatnot. Of course, I couldn't drive it. I was out of work for six months. Then they put me back in as a dispatcher. Okay, at that point, the dispatch had grown to where we handled not just the fire calls for Concord, which is the state capital, we handled the calls for 10 surrounding towns. And after about six months of that, I knew I did not want to be behind a desk and sitting behind this console with lights and buttons and switches and dials on it. I wanted back on the floor. <clears throat> Orthopedic surgeon said, no. Wow. So I was not going to sit behind that desk for 40 more years. Yeah. So I resigned. And... I left New Hampshire in February of 80. 
Lived in North Carolina first for about eight months, and then we moved to Florida. What'd you do in North Carolina? I worked at a walk, um, yeah, a walk, a walk quarry. A, a rock a quarry. Rock quarry. <laughs> what did you do? Then they had to close that because they came in and doing some tests. They found a, uh, the rock that we were mining was mildly radioactive. The water we were drinking had radon in it. Uh -huh. oh, oh, wow. my so they shut the place down. It's back open now. But it had no effects from that. So I got tired of that. Then we moved to Florida. And I spent... X number of years welding. Okay. And then the last nine years of my life that I worked, I was over here at Bramlett's and Palaka doing a shipping and receiving for a plumbing and electric supply house. What year was that that you finally stopped? Huh? Working? What year was that that you retired? 19, 2009. 2009. So it'll be 11 years this coming February. Yeah. And <laughs> I just say it. For the most part, no offense to anybody here, our retirement has not been all that good to me. No. Between losing my wife, yeah. going through severe intestinal surgery that almost cost me my life, then having heart surgery, yeah. then eye surgery, and now battling cancer, uh, <laughs> I wish I was working again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but with her, of course, I don't know where I'd be without this thing. <laughs> and for us, what, the third of next month will be six years. Wow. Six years. Six years. Did, and this thing, of course, <laughs> we, we spoke on the phone, we emailed each other back and forth on that yeah. chat thing. Yeah. Okay. The day that we met, was at that Cedar River Seafood Restaurant yeah. in Middleburg. Yeah. Okay. She didn't know, basically didn't know how to get there, so I was sitting there in the parking lot talking with her on the phone. Finally, she pulls in right beside me, <laughs> and she's still yapping on the phone. Well, I got out of the truck, walk around, she's yapping away, and she said, well, when do I get to see you? And I said, look out the damn window. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it started. All right. Yeah. <laughs>